What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to learn about the basics of call kit, particularly how to show an incoming call and work through some of the important objects in the framework. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here. Let's open up Xcode, create a new project and dive right in. So we're going to pick a app template under iOS and I'm going to call this call buddy. Obviously call it whatever you want. We're going to stick with Swift and for the interface, we're going to storyboard it really doesn't matter we're not going to actually build out any ui today but i digress i'll pick storyboard save it to my desktop and the first thing i'm going to do is just full screen xcode here and you'll see that i've got my um, device plugged in because we can't actually see incoming calls in the simulator though i will stick with the 14 pro simulator just to make sure we are able to compile at the bare minimum and that being said let's jump into our view controller and get into things so we are going to write out a function um, I will say start demo and I'm just going to call this in view did load and we're going to work in another Swift file that I'll create now called call manager. Now call manager will be a Swift file and inside of here we're going to write out the functionality to show an incoming call. Now before I get ahead of myself, let's talk about what call kit lets you do. So call kit is basically Apple's interface to report incoming calls, notify the system that, hey, a call is in progress. That's how you get a call to show up in the call history, in the phone app. It doesn't actually handle the voice over IP or the infrastructure for placing a call. The expectation is that you're gonna use something like Agora or some other third party framework, even first party to handle the video call or the audio call. And this is how you're gonna interface with the systems calling components. So let's go ahead and import call kit here. Let me move it up here so it's alphabetized. And let's create a object here called call manager. Now this is going to need to um, inherit from NS object. Let's see if it decides to autocomplete. There we go. And the reason we want to uh, inherit from NS object, and I forgot the class keyword here, is because we're going to want to conform to a protocol momentarily that uh, expects NS object as the class. So let's go ahead and create two properties in here. The first one is going to be a provider, and I'll create this in a second. And the second one is going to be a call controller. So the provider is going to be a CX provider with a configuration. And here this takes a CX provider configuration. We're not going to mess around too much with this. Um, and we can just create this. It's a base class with an implementation. So we don't actually need to specify anything. So we can just do provider like so. Now the call controller, once again, will be pretty sim similar as well. So we'll do CX call controller like so. And the call controller can take a queue um, or we can just create it like this. We'll create it uh, without a queue like that. So for example, if you wanna handle all this calling stuff on a background queue or your own queue to instrument performance, you are certainly able to do so. So let's go ahead and uh, create an initializer, or I should say override the initializer since we are inheriting from NS object. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is say provider set delegates, and this is going to be the delegate we want to conform to, CX provider delegates, so I'll say self, and the queue here we'll just use a nil since we don't really care to use our own separate queue. So here we're gonna say CS provider delegate, and I'll explain all this in a moment, so just bear with me. I'll hit fix and I'll bring in the minimum required function here and I will move it down here. And let's talk about um, what all of this is going to do. So essentially, we're gonna use this object to report to the system, hey, there's an incoming call, you should you know, get the ringer going, play the user's ringtone, and at the top of the screen, show the you know, banner, basically show an incoming call. We can also use this provider, or this object, this call manager, to say, hey, start a call. In other words, the user's picked up, they've answered, start the actual call session and show that a call is in progress. You can also end a call, et cetera, et cetera. Now this delegate actually gives you handles onto uh, system hooks, things like the provider did reset, the provider began. Um, there's also things in here like a uh, transaction was executed. We'll talk about um, performing actions. You'll see that there is a start action, a answer call action, and et cetera, et cetera. So we'll implement two of these in a second just to showcase what they actually are. So I am going to create two functions in here. 
The first one is going to be report incoming call. So let's say public func report incoming call. And the second one here is going to be uh, start call. Now we need a way to tell the system how to identify a particular call session. We need some unique identifier, right? So if we say, hey, there's an incoming call coming in and the user answers it, we need to use the same ID to say, hey, okay, it was answered, start that call. So we're gonna use a UUID for that. So this will just be a UUID type. And similarly down here, we're gonna have the same exact API. So we'll say UUID. And we also want something that's called a handle. In other words, who is placing the call? What is the name of this person? Is it the name of a contact? Is it a username? What the heck is it? What should we show to the user? So we're gonna say handle, which will just be a string. And this will be important down here as well. So we'll copy and paste it. Now to actually report the incoming call, it's pretty simple. We can say provider reports incoming call and you'll see that this takes a UUID a update and then a completion handler as a, as well. So the UUID sample is just the ID. Now what the heck is this call update? Well, we need to actually create this up here. So we can say that a update will be a CX call update. And we can create this as such. Now on this update, we can actually specify the handle if I'm not mistaken. So let's see, we want this to be a update and the update will be passed into here. And we do want to specify the handle. So let me see if I can specify it in here. Looks like I cannot. Let me jump into this and refresh my memory. I have specified that handle because it is, it is important. It does come in uh, later on. So we have a remote handle on here. I believe there's just a handle. But while we're in here, you'll notice that there are other things you can specify, such as does this incoming call support video? Does it support grouping? Can we add more people to it? Does it support putting the call on hold, et cetera, et cetera. There's also a localized uh, caller name if you do want to support multiple um, you know, names based on the localization. But I guess it was remote handle here. So I am going to say the updates.remote handle will be handle. And then here we will get a optional error in. And we're gonna say if let error equals an error, we'll just print out a string describing error. Otherwise I will print out a call reported like so. So if we compile, let's see, this is gonna yell at me. So it looks like it is indeed yelling at me because can I assign value of type string to CX handle? Uh, yes, it's, this is because this needs to be a CX handle, which will actually wrap the type of the handle. And you'll see there's a couple in here. So you can do phone number or email. I'm just gonna say generic and we're gonna see the value will be handle. So if you've ever noticed how you can place FaceTime calls in iOS, with email addresses, this is actually exactly how Apple does it. So we're gonna stick with generic since this is not an email um, or a phone number of what we're gonna pass in. So if you compile now, everything should be working in terms of compiling and I should be able to give this a run on my simulator here as well if it decides to pop up. So I'll move this to this desktop and let that run over there. So before we actually call this on the view controller to see something in action, um, let's go ahead and implement this as well, because this is pretty simple to do as well. So instead of notifying the provider here, we are going to do this on the call controller. We are actually going to start a transaction. So we're going to say request transaction, and we can specify a collection of transactions, a single transaction, uh, and this one can be async as well. Uh, it supports async awaits. So we are going to say here, request transaction, and I will specify, I'll use this, this one here, I guess. So it'll take collection of CX actions, and then we have a completion handler once again with just an error in here. Now, what the heck is a CX action? So you'll notice when we jumped into the delegate, there was something of the name, a, a start call action. So we want to actually create that action. So this is going to be a CX, start call action and this gets created once again with an id and a handle which is why we pass this in here once again this is a cx handle so i'll create the same cx handle up here so let me actually grab this guy and i will create this right up here and we'll try to go ahead and compile it is yelling at me because we have a typo there so we'll go ahead and do that now down here we actually can pass in the action directly um, and we want to do it in a transaction. So we're gonna say a 
transaction here will be CX, and I keep typing it backwards, a CX transaction, and this can take a single action, multiple actions, or you can create it with the unarchiver, aka NS coder. So here we're gonna go ahead and pass in our action. And if I'm not mistaken, I can go ahead and pass in this, and we should be able to start a transaction. Let me see what the API looks like here. So here it takes in CX action, CX action. So there is an API to request a transaction. Here we go. So what we wanna do is we wanna request and it's just transaction. So we'll go ahead and say request and we should be able to pass in the transaction like so. Now we get an error like this. And similarly, we'll handle the error by just unwrapping it and printing it out. And we'll go ahead and here say call started. So to report a call, you use a provider and you say, hey, report this income and call. And to answer the call, you can request a transaction. So similar to the start call transaction, and we won't go too deep into this since there's literally tons and tons of them, there are other actions. So there's an end call action. You can say CX. If you just do CX action, you'll actually see all the other ones. So there's start call action. There's also, let's see, end call action. There's answer call action. So there's quite a few. So you'll see actually answer and start here. There is a difference. Uh, answer is basically, you know, we should be in the state where we're connecting the session. And the actual start call is, okay, the session's connected, start the communication, right? Um, and all of this, once again, is just a report between the system call infrastructure and what you're supposed to implement on your own, which is all the underlying calling capabilities. So that all being said, and my spiel out of the way, Let's jump into the view controller and actually use this and see what the heck we get. So I'll find all that class because my OCD is telling me to. And here we will say call manager will be our call manager. And we'll just instantiate it like so. And let me actually do it down here. It makes my life easier. And what I'll go ahead and do is on a delay, we'll say dispatch queue main, fix my typo main, and we'll do async. Uh, and we wanna do async after, so I'll use this one down here. Maybe in like two seconds, we want a call to come in, and we are going to say call manager, we wanna report an incoming call. The UUID, I'll go ahead and say is an ID, which will be a UUID, like so. And then the handle will go ahead and say, hey, Tim Cook is calling me. And this is a handle we expect to see. So if you give this a run on your simulator, what you'll notice is that you're gonna get an error in your console, which is expected. So bear with it two seconds, and we should see an error down here, if I'm not mistaken. And let's see, let's see, looks like we are not seeing this. So let me put a print in here. All right, I will come into here and I will toss in a print of reporting call and I'll toss in a print in here of starting call and we'll give that a try once more just to see if we do actually get the print. Okay, so we definitely get the print. Um, let me call the other one. One of these actually shows an error. So we'll do this one and once again, we'll do Tim Cook. But the point is you should run this on a physical device so you don't actually see the error, there's the error. Okay, so when you try to start a call, it actually yells at you. Uh, you can't request a transaction on a simulator, makes sense. So let me go ahead and run this on my physical device. And what I'll do is I will screen capture my physical device here so I can show y'all what it looks like on the actual phone. Cause it is pretty cool to see something as native as the uh, ringer, an actual phone call coming in on your physical device. So let me go ahead and run it on my iPhone here. And what is installing is super slow because it knows I'm recording a video and there it goes, it launched. And if we just bear with it, you can probably hear my ringtone uh, in like two seconds. So we should see the call coming in. It looks like my phone is actually on do not disturb. So let me actually turn that off and let me give this a run once more. And we should see this come in if you bear with it two seconds. All right, so it looks like we still don't see it and we're gonna debug this together because I am determined to not cut this video while I am recording. So we will give this a run again. I will background the app and we should still see the print down here. And it looks like we are not seeing it. So let's see what the heck is going on. If I need to, I will cut the video and we can always resume once I figure out what the heck I forgot to do. 
I want to say I need to also include background capabilities. So let me actually include the background mode capabilities. And if memory serves, this is what I had done previously. So here we go. Voiceover IP. Okay. What else would I need to do? We'll just do background fetch. We'll also do background processing. Maybe we'll do push to talk as well. Give this a run once more. And let's see if our ringer actually kicks off. We totally wrote our code correctly. There we go, awesome. So you do need to actually add uh, the background modes, which I totally forgot to do, and you will actually see the call appear. So that is all I've got. Let's try this one more time, and I'll make my ringer volume a little louder to make sure you guys can hear it. And in a second, we should get the call. Ah, and, I, and I keep hitting the volume button, which is why it goes away, but I'll screen capture it, toss it onto the screen somewhere about now. Thanks again for watching. That's all I've got for you guys today. If you're interested in call kit, let me know down below. It's a pretty large framework, so you can get pretty deep into the weeds. Uh, if you're new here and haven't subscribed, make sure to do so to stay tuned for new iOS and Swift content, some other tech stuff along the way. Almost at 80,000 subs. Appreciate all of you. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.